children how are you all i hope you all are happy so before we start our class let me tell you all something interesting children did you know that kailashanath temple in ellora is carved out of one single rock starting from rivers that means first the roof then the pillars and finally the base this is the only structure to be built in such a way okay students so before we start our class let me ask you something like when you meet your friend what would your friend ask you first what is the first question your friend ask you yes he would ask you how are you right so for that what will be your answer yes you would say i am doing good or i am fine or else you also you would say not bad okay for this you you could ha you have answered but if he ask you how is india doing what would you answer yes you you would think because he is asking about the whole nation so for that there is something you you should know to say whether india is doing good or not we are going to see about that in today's class in economics unit 1 the gross domestic product and its growth and introduction so by knowing this you can you can say how india is doing whether it is good whether it is doing good or whether it is doing bad yes so for that we will see the in, uh, we will see the introduction in that we will see the definition which is the gdp is the market value of all the final goods and services produced in the country during a time period so in this specifically we can see market value goods and services so goods and services goods means tangible things tangible means which you can feel or touch and services means intangible that means activities so the uh, tangible and intangible things that have been produced in the country then the market value is the price that is being that the goods and services the price which the goods and services are sold in the market so this is the market value for example we can say you go you are going to a hotel and you are ordering for idlis or tea and in that this idlis and tea are the tangible things so that means they are the goods and the services services which part of this comes for under services so the part of this comes under services is the people who cook so cooking is a service then serving the food in the hotel they are the services so these are the intangible things which you cannot feel or touch so this is what says from this definition here we next we'll see the national income here the national income it is a measure of the total value of goods and services produced by an economy over a period of time so period of time means it can be normally a year so the goods and services which have been produced it is also known as gross national product or national dividend so there are two common names which is the gro gross national product or the national dividend or you can say it as national income also in this national income there are various terms associated with measuring with measuring this national income so we'll see the various terms the first term is gross national product which is the total value of goods and services produced and the income received in a year by the domestic residents so here the equation you can see the gnp is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m plus n f i a so c means consumption i means investment g means government expenditure x minus m x is export and m is import n f i a means net factor income from abroad then next we'll see the gross domestic product here gross domestic product means the total value of the outcome of goods and services the outcomes of the goods and services which have been produced by the factors of production and that means produced from the factories so within the geographical boundary that means within within our country is is the gross domestic product the next is the national uh, net national product which is that it says that net national product is arrived by making some adjustment with regard to depreciation that is 
we arrive the net, net national product by deducting the value from the g uh, from gnp that means uh, nnp is equal to gnp minus depreciation net domestic product is nothing but it is a part of gross domestic product and net domestic product is obtained from gross domestic product by deducting the depreciation which is ndp is equal to gdp minus depreciation the fifth one is per capita income pci per capita income or output per person is an indicator to show the living standard of the people so to show the living standard of the people in in the country is called a per capita income which is per capita income is equal to national income by population next is the personal income where you can say that it is the total money income received by the individuals and the household of the country so probably the sources are uh, from direct taxes or uh, from personal income that can be expressed so it it, it is expressed in this following uh, equation which is PI is equal to NI corporate income taxes minus undistributed corporate profits minus social social security contribution plus transfer payment. The next one is the disposable income. So disposable income means actual income which can be spent on consumption by the individuals and families. So DPI is equal to PI minus direct taxes which is direct taxes means from consumption approach direct taxes is equal to consumption expenditures plus savings. So these are the seven uh, various terms used for measuring the national income. We will see the gross domestic product, how it is produced in country, like how they use it for the produce, production in the country. So GDP of India includes only the market value of goods and services service produced in India. So, for example, the market value of apple produced in Kashmir are included in the GDP, GDP of, our, of our country, which is, which is included in the Indian GDP because Kashmir is in India. But the market value of the apple, which is produced in California, even though it has been uh, sold in Indian markets, it has not been included in G, uh, Indian GDP because California is in us it is not in india right the next is the produced during a time period that means the gdp of a country measures the market value of goods and services produced only during specific time period so only during specific time period uh, this measures are being calculated that means you cannot calculate the measures from the gdp from the past year like uh, like 2018 or 2019 you can only calculate the gdp of 2020 you can only calculate the goods produced or oh, which happened only in 2020 whereas you cannot uh, add uh, the goods produced or purchased in 2019 the next is the methods that are used for calculating gdp so there are some methods which are used for calculating they are the expenditure approach income approach and the third one is value added approach expenditure approach means which are adding the expenditure on all the final goods and services produced in the country in a specified period then the income approach means earning of men and the perspectives of the earnings of men and women who are involved in producing the goods and services so this is called the income approach value added approach means you go to a hotel and you get a cup of tea right the cup of tea it is a final good but the goods used to produce it are tea powder milk and tea only with that you can get a tea property only with that you can get so these three are the immediate goods that is why you get a cup of tea so the total thing, so immediate goods and the final, you, by the immediate good, you get the final goods, which is the value added approach. And the next is the importance of GDP. We'll see what are the importance of GDP. They are the study of economic growth, 
then unequal distribution of wealth, then problems of inflation and deflation, then comparison with developed countries of the world, and estimate the purchasing power, public sector, and the last one is guide to economic planning. So these seven points are the importance for the of GDP. Next is the limitations of GDP. We have some limitations. They are several important goods and services are left out of GDP. So they some might not be added uh, in calculating GDP. GDP measures only quantity but not quality. GDP does not tell us about the way income is dis distributed in the country. The GDP does not tell us how the, the kind of people live in this country. Next is the composition of gross domestic product. Here we can see that Indian economy is broadly divided into three sectors, which is which contributes to GDP. They are primary sector, which is the agricultural sector, then the secondary sector, which is called the industry sector, and third one is treasury sector, which is also called as the service sector. We'll see what is primary sector, where we can say that this primary sector is based on the allied activities uh, and the production of raw materials such as cattle farm, then uh, fishing, mining, forestry, coal, corn, all these are under the primary sector, how they are being uh, produced. Next is the secondary sector, which is also called as the industrial sector, where they produce, they are produced by transforming raw materials. So important industries are like iron, steel, then cotton textile, jute, sugar, etc. So there are many industries that you all might know, right? So the and other small scale industries are also coming under the secondary sector. The last one is the treasury sector. This is also known as the service sector. That means service, I already have said you what does service mean. So service means not alone the cooks and all that. But service also comes as service sector. In this, it, uh, the government employs the, the scientist research, scientific research, then the post, telegram, the banking, education, all these comes under the service sector. So students, so far we have seen about the gross domestic product, the composition, the methods, how to calculate the gross domestic product and the composition of the gross domestic product. I hope you all have understood what you have seen in today's class and I also hope that you all would study and prepare for your test. Thank you students. Thank you for listening patiently. See you all in the next class students.